The blockbuster movie American Gangster, produced by Universal Pictures, was based on the lifestyle of the famous American drug lord Frank Lucas. The release of the movie came with so much argument on what is true about Frank's life in reality against what the film presented him to be. The picture is 1% reality and 99% Hollywood, says federal judge Sterling Johnson. According to him, Frank was illiterate, vicious, and violent in real-life situations compared to what the film portrays him to be. Denzel Washington is simply the opposite of what Frank looks like. Most of the stories were largely exaggerated and fabricated for narrative effects. Is it really true that a large larger percentage of the movie was exaggerated or fabricated just for narrative effect. Isn't that defamation of character and personality? Let's find out the real truth against the fiction about Frank Lucas's life in the movie. Before we get right into the details, kindly click on the subscribe button and the notification bell for more informative and interesting content like this. Are the following really true or fabricated about Frank Lucas? Number one, did the dirty cop commit suicide by blowing his brains out with a shotgun as portrayed in the movie? The answer to the question is no. According to the movie, Detective Trupo committed suicide before the police could take him into custody. This is contrary to what actually happened in real life, according to Frank Lucas. He made it known that Detective Trupo is well and very much alive. Number two, was Richie Robert a major player in bringing down Frank Lucas? According to Ron Chapisiuk, the author of Superfly, The True Untold Story of Frank Lucas, an American Gangster, Detective Richie Robert played a minor role in Frank Lucas's investigation. Robert being a key player in bringing down Lucas was just a Hollywood imagination. Richie Robert himself said in an interview with Charlie Rose that he was more like a composite in the investigation of Frank. According to him, they had a squad of guys that worked on him. Number three, was everything owned by Frank Lucas confiscated by the government? Yes, absolutely everything. Just after the raid on Frank Lucas's New Jersey home in 1975, the entire assets and properties of Frank were seized by the government. On his release from prison in 1991, he couldn't even afford a pack of cigarettes. Frank's properties in Chicago, North Carolina, Miami, Detroit, Puerto Rico, and many more were all sealed by the government, including his money in offshore Cayman Islands accounts. According to Richie Roberts, $35 million and three to four times that amount in properties were confiscated by the government. Frank Lucas regretted and advised that people should be very private as much as possible with their wealth. In his words, take my word for it, if you got something, hide it, because they can go to any bank and take it. You might be wondering why the government has such a right to seal someone else's account. Well, former Detective Richie Robert explained in an interview that the United States government had an agreement with all of these banks that if the government can present strong evidence that such a person's money came in through illegal conspiracy, then the account can be confiscated. Number four, did Frank snitch only on corrupt and dirty cops and not fellow drug dealers? Though Frank denied snitching on the other dealers like him, Richie Robert countered his resolve. According to Robert in an interview, if Frank did not do what he did, talk about people he talked about, there would have been a lot more people out there committing a crime and living free. A lot more people will have their lives and families destroyed because of it. He further stated that he should be commended for this. Robert established that Frank snitched on dirty cops and fellow drug dealers. Authorities were able to convict more than 100 people through Frank's testimonials. Number five, did Bumpy Johnson really die in an appliance store? The answer is no. According to the true story of the American gangster, Bumpy Johnson actually died in Wells Restaurant in 1968 in New York City. The appliance store location in the movie was just a representation of Bumpy's disgust with the larger chain stores that were trooping into his territory. The stores made it very difficult or impossible for him to get a cut in the profits. Number six, was Frank Lucas at the scene of Bumpy Johnson's death? Based on the movie and interview from Frank, he was in Wells' restaurant with Bumpy Johnson when Bumpy suddenly began to shake and fell on the floor. This was contrary to what Mamie, Bumpy's wife, said. She stated that Frank was never with Bumpy when he had an attack in Wells' restaurant. According to her, Bumpy passed away in the arms of Junie Bird, his childhood friend. Mamie Johnson hates to see the movie American Gangster because it's not true. She said in an interview with Philadelphia Daily News in 2007, I don't want to see it because it's not true. Frank was nowhere around. Bumpy didn't die with Frank Lucas. All of his talk is a lie. 
Number seven, is it true that Frank was Bumpy Johnson's driver for 15 years? Denzel Washington, who played the role of Frank Lucas, said in an interview in the movie that he had been a driver to Bumpy for 15 years. Bumpy's wife, Mamie Johnson, however, disagreed with the submission. She made it clear that Bumpy never had a driver for 15 years. She admitted that Frank may have driven her husband around a few times, but never his driver. She further said that her husband only saw Frank as someone he could allow to always carry his coat. Number eight, is it true that Frank witnessed the police kill him when he was a child? At the conclusion of the movie American Gangster, Denzel Washington, while playing the role of Frank Lucas, spoke about how he watched his 12-year-old boy cousin shot dead by the police through his mouth. However, the true story stated that a member of Ku Klux Klan was responsible for Frank Lucas's cousin's death and not the police as portrayed in the movie. According to Frank, they accused his brother for eyeballing a white girl walking down the street. They immediately tied him to the rope and pulled the trigger directly in his mouth. This terrible moment led to Frank's life of crime that metamorphosed into today's feared kingpin. Number nine, was Julie Lucas a former Miss Puerto Rico? Frank admits that the producers and the directors of the movie were wrong about his wife, Julie, being a former Miss Puerto Rico. According to Frank, she had a similar experience as a homecoming queen, but don't know about being a former Miss Puerto Rico. Further research also confirmed that the maiden name of Frank's wife is Julie Ferrate and does not in any way appear in the list of Miss Puerto Rico winners. Number 10. Did Frank's expensive fur coat really give him away to authorities? It's definitely a no. The coat didn't give him away. Richie Roberts stated that Frank Lucas and his people are well known already by the law enforcement agencies. The coat drew more attention to him, though. It's a costly error to go about wearing a jacket that's three times the salary of the police officer looking for you. It makes them more angry while they try every means to hunt you down. Number 11. Is it true that Detective Richie Robert was in a custody battle with his wife? This was just a Hollywood imagination. The movie showed Richie and his wife engaged in a custody battle, which ended with him admitting that he was a failure as a father. Richie reacted to the movie as offensive, as he and his first wife had no child together. Number 12. Did the police find money buried in Frank Lucas's house? In the movie, a cop found money buried under a doghouse in Denzel Washington's house. Frank debunked the allegation when he was interrogated. In his words, I never bury money in my house. Number 13. Was Frank Lucas arrested by Richie Robert while coming out of church? This is another fiction in the movie. The real Richie Robert referred to it as a wonderful scene, but admitted that the arrest didn't go down that way. Frank and his wife were actually arrested during their raid on their Teaneck, New Jersey home. Number 14. Was it Frank's wife that bought him the fur coat and hat? Frank's wife bought him the chinchilla's fur coat, according to the American Gangster True Story, though the coat wasn't the basis for his arrest because they have always been hunting him. Frank, however, thought the chinchilla coat led the police to notice him. The movie portrayed the pitfall of over-flamboyant gangster with the $50,000 chinchilla coat and the $10,000 matching hat. Frank also splashes $140,000 on a few Van Cleef bracelets in real life. Number 15. Is it true that Frank recruited his brothers and cousins from North Carolina. This part of the movie is very true. Frank requested the help of his brothers and cousins and moved them to New York from rural North Carolina. All his five brothers became popular as country boys. Frank revealed his reason for recruiting his rural family members into his businesses. According to him, a country boy, you can give him any amount of money. His wife and kids might be hungry and he'll never touch your stuff until he checks with you. A city boy will take your last penny and deny it, looking you in the face. There's so much to talk about in the truth and fiction of the movie, but we have to keep it short and stop here today. Sure, you find the content very interesting and informative, so don't forget to click on the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on the future interesting videos. Thanks for watching.